A very good morning to our esteemed guests from Malaysia and good evening to those joining us from the United States today. My name is Marsha Harrell and I will be your moderator for today's session. Welcome to today's webinar entitled Taylor's ADP, Fast Track Your Way to US Degrees in Engineering and Computer Science. With that, I would like to issue a brief refresher on the ADP program here in Taylor's. The Taylor's ADP program is a two-year transfer pathway that enables students to, tra to transition successfully into reputable universities abroad. The interactive nature of the American-style curriculum prepares students well for the stringent education standards of some of the best universities in the world. Hence, the aim of this session is to share some insight on the transfer pathways towards pursuing affordable U.S. degrees in engineering and computer science offered by Taylor's ADP. Before we officially get started, I would like to issue a kind reminder on our housekeeping rules. All participants are highly encouraged to turn on their cameras, as we would love to see you on this lovely Saturday morning. Kindly ensure that your mics are kept on mute throughout this session. Should you have any queries, please pop them in the chat box so that we can address them during our Q&A session later on. Now, I am pleased to introduce the stream coordinator and senior lecturer of American Degree Transfer Program at Taylor's University, Dr. Wong Yao Siung, to give the opening remarks and provide us with a little insight on the transfer pathway offered by Taylor's ADP in pursuing affordable overseas degree at top-ranking American universities. Dr. Wong is a senior lecturer, stream coordinator of engineering and computer science department in the American Degree Transfer Program. He holds a PhD in science, majoring in biochemistry, and postgraduate certificate in higher education teaching and learning. Dr. Wong is actively involved in e-learning, blended learning, and is passionate about educational technology and innovative pedagogy in teaching and learning. All right, I will share my slide. Thank you for the speaker, Masha. Thank you so much for introducing, uh, for the introductions. Can you all see my slide here? Yes, Dr. All right. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar organized by ADP, Taylor University. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank our speaker for today. Thank you for your time, uh, Dr. O and also Dr. Chris for joining us today, this morning. Right, so I'll go through with you some of our uh, overview of this uh, ADP program. It will take about 10 to 15 minutes. Right, uh, why study Taylor American Degree Transfer Program? So this is the first question that I'll ask all my uh, audience here or participant here. So why American Degree Transfer Program? Uh, this program is unique in such a way that it prepares the students uh, for smooth transitions and to a flexible, holistic American education system. So this is a transfer pathway, right? And I'll go through with you this uh, one slide here about a brief overview of what is the American Degree Transfer Program. So we have established in 1996, it's been a 25 year excellence in American education. Okay, we have four major. We have the computer science, engineering, liberal arts, and also the business major. We have over 5,000 alumni globally over 10 different countries, and we have a uh, Malaysian also uh, we sending the scholar to our uh, this program, okay? And also recently, I think a few years back ago, we have a franchise program with uh, our partner university here, Indonesia. So, and we have four campuses in the Jakarta, Indonesia, right? And we have over 200 US partner, a uh, group of eight Australia, and we also have some uh, top Canadians university. Okay, we also oftenly uh, organize all the education fair, right? You can see like uh, Edu Canada Fair, US Embassy, Malaysia, and we organize them, right? So we sometimes invite them for having conversation with our students, okay? Uh, in our faculty, we have a highly qualified and also um, skilled uh, faculty, right? We are, some of us actually won some award and uh, recognition in teaching and learning. Uh, they published uh, they are highly published uh, 
researcher. They, some of them, they acquire a research grant, right? And a few of us actually is also getting some of the fellowship recipients, okay? And we also have some visiting scholar at NYU, okay? Uh, we also actively engage with our university partner, uh, our industry partner. Like later, I'm going to show you some pictures, some snapshot, right, of all those uh, industry partners. All right, come to this slide here. This is our four different major here. We have the engineering. So engineering students, uh, they can major in different types of uh, engineering, like civil engineering, uh, electrical engineering, even mechanical engineering. Okay, applied science also fall under these engineering departments. Okay. And next, we have the business. So the business student, they can venture into uh, actual science, econs, right, marketing, finance, and so on. Next, we have our uh, computer science. Right, so computer science student, they can actually do something like uh, artificial intelligence, uh, computer-related uh, technology like gaming, graphics, and even like software developments. Machine learning is very popular nowadays, okay? And uh, we have the last, next one will be a liberal arts. So liberal arts student basically, they will learn something like history, uh, mass communications, um, political science, like psychology and also sociology, right? So here we, uh, we encourage our students more on the knowledge, right? Of course, we are, we are giving them the knowledge and also we also emphasize on all these uh, practical skill, like soft skill. That's why later you're going to see some picture uh, about our student involvement in all those uh, extracurricular activity. And we provide a holistic support to the students. Okay. So the pathway is a two years program. So we have three different intakes. We have the February intakes, and we have the June and also the August intake. Uh, we provide academic, academic transitions, and we have an advisor assigned to each student. We even have our past, past session, which is a peer assisted study session. It's more like tutorial base where we offer peer to peer and also like extra tuition for the students. We have a variety of different clubs and society. Actually, students uh, are actually allowed to form their own club or society. So here, where we train the student to be uh, to be uh, independent, to uh, to voice out their their their, their leadership skill, also to uh, to improve their soft skill. Okay, and also we provide a pre departure briefing and also application support to our student. And the student can transfer to US, which are major pathway, and also in Canada, and continue for the rest of the two years. Right here, we have a list of uh, our ADP uh, educator. All right, so we are all are highly qualified. Uh, most of them are having a PhD and uh, are very experienced faculty here. So uh, some of us are even cross teaching, like for myself. I teach nutrition, I teach chemistry, I even teach mathematics also, right? So all of us are quite versatile and we are experienced in uh, research and also teaching. Okay. Here, I, uh, let me show you here is a series of workshops here. So a knowledge building workshop and webinar we have organized uh, over the year. Like we have some are related to uh, sociology and some are related to mathematics because we have four different departments. So sometimes we all uh, organize some webinars and this is all free for our students and even open to the public to join, okay? Right, come to here, as you can see, uh, due to the pandemics, uh, I think this is actually the third year we're having these pandemics. I think last year we're having the lockdown, so we are not able to have face-to-face -face, uh, session. So what we do is that uh, we have this, uh, we call it the hybrid learning, or sometimes we call it online learning, pure learning. Right on the left hand side, as you can see, the students are using some open source uh, tools here, like for computer science, they're actually having all this uh, online software that you can use. All right. Uh, and here we organize, as you can see in the middle here, we have the Pi Day, right? This is the Pi. So I think Pi, Pi Day just recently just over, right? On the March of 18, right? So we are organizing this Pi Day where the students actually, you can see that. They come up with their virtual background on different uh, pictures of pie. Okay, so we have a like a short meeting or short gatherings. On the right hand side, as you can see, this is more on the hybrid learning for the for the applied science uh, module here, where we have the on top. You can see there's a face to face in campus practical. At the same time, we actually supplemental with this uh, virtual virtual lab. We call it the labster, where the student actually try out all those simulation on the lab. So they're having this sort of um, experiencing this kind of uh, 
IN2 is because we are aligning with the four IR revolutions. And here are some of the practical skills that a student gain through NDP program. We have the snap in. So snap in, uh, I believe is American camera and social media company. Right. Uh, I think the famous one will be the Snapchat and also the Bitmoji, if not mistaken. Right. Uh, we having uh, we actually signed a partnership with the smart uh, snap in com uh, company. Okay, so they also organize some uh, workshop for our students where the student learn some hands on skill how to use this uh, lens studio. And we also some webinar on NASA and also a uh, national competition on the e commerce, right? The banking. And you look at the middle, we have the stock challenge. Uh, stock challenge is one of our successful events, right? Uh, where the student learn some of the basics. Uh, knowledge in investing in a real stock market data. So they experience this uh, real world scenario. I think this is a very good thing because uh, they learn how to work in teams, how to invest their money uh, wisely. Okay. So it's quite a good, great experience for our NDP student. Okay. Next, I'm going to bring you this uh, good news. Right. So uh, I think in the next semester, we're going to organize, uh, we're going to introduce two two different uh, new module, new models in the computer science. First one will be an uh, introduction to the data science. And the second one will be an uh, introduction to the software engineering. Uh, these two modules is actually uh, open to all students, right? They actually can, uh, can enroll in this module so that they give them more options to take this as an elective. So uh, one of the positive impact of offering these two new modules is that it will increase the competitiveness and also transferability of our student to the computer science, okay? Because we are, we are aligning with the four industrial revolutions, so the IR 4.0. And here are some of the activity. As you can see, this bring all the, our students together. So where they actually uh, uncover their hidden talents among the students, right? We have some sport, indoor sport competition, outdoor activity, even some games, right? So I, I believe through all this uh, core curriculum and also extra curriculum activity, they're able to build their soft skill because we don't just emphasize on the learning, the teaching. We want the student to build their soft skill like leadership skill, communication skill, teamwork, and also time management. Okay, All this capability will uh, go a long way ensuring they are future ready in the workspace. And here we have some partner you see. Uh, this is our commencement, a commencement ceremony. And I think uh, this is very prominent. I think this is one of the history in NDP program. The only private university, uh, our former president, US president visited, uh, will be the Taylor University Lakeside Campus. I think this is back in 2015 or 16, if not mistaken, right, where uh, Taylor University actually hosted uh, a town hall forums. Uh, where we invite the invited the uh, uh, Barack or the uh, uh, president, former president, uh, to actually to address our our students in the campus. And here are some of the achievement of our NDP student. We have uh, University of Pennsylvania Wharton Business School in behavioral economics. Okay, and we have our Lisa here is our former uh, NDP student. Actually, is one of the very Victorian UST uh, very Victorian speaker, the UST of Wisconsin uh, Madison. And we have Yo Ji Song uh, accepted into MIT, uh, majoring in mathematics. And we have a look, Lei Wei Nun, right, accepted in Corner University in the computer science. Right, I'm just going to go through quickly, go through with this uh, some of the ADP virtual ceremony. Right, as you can see, uh, we are all everything. We have webinars, we have some achievement from the the faculties, we also have address speaker from our invited speaker and so on, right? So this is a virtual, some of the screenshot of our recent virtual commencement ceremony. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, I will just, uh, if you have any questions, it's always uh, uh, welcome to visit our campus. We are open to all. And of course, if you have any questions, you can of course write to us. You can write to the program director, Dr. Lo. All right. So thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wong. Okay, so now I would like to kindly ask all participants to turn on your cameras as we would love to take a group picture with all the attendees here with us today.
Okay, can you please stand on your camera? Okay. On the count of one, two, three. Okay, one more at the count of one, two, three. Okay, thank you everyone. Right, maybe we have some minutes for them to turn on the camera. Right, I can see some uh, turning on the camera. Oh, okay, okay, sure. Yeah, maybe we can give maybe a few seconds of, maybe 30 seconds for you to turn on the camera, right? Don't be shy, right? Okay, Marsha, we can take the group photo. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, another one. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you. I would now like to welcome our first speaker for today's webinar, Dr. Oh A. San, Principal Advisor of Pacific Research Center of Malaysia, and Chairman at KKIP Aerospace Training Center. Allow me to present a quick introduction on Dr. Oh A. San. Dr. Oh A. San is the Chairman of KKIP Aerospace Sendirian Berhad, a Sabah state-owned company pioneering the aerospace industry in the territory. He is also a board member of Bornean Timber Sendirian Berhad. He is a council member of the Commonwealth Magistrates and Judges Association. He is also an avid commentator and columnist on politics, economics, and current affairs for various international media. Dr. Oh was an administrative officer at the International Telecommunication Union and a scientific and legal consultant to the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs in Geneva, Switzerland. He graduated from the University of California, USA, where he earned his JD, MBA, MSc Engineering, BSc Aeronautical and Mechanical Engineering, and BA German. Dr. Oh Esan, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ileana, for your kind uh, introduction. Uh, I, I don't have uh, any slides uh, this morning, but uh, I would uh, perhaps like to share with you some of uh, my experience having studied uh, engineering uh, for both my undergrad as well as uh, for my uh, master's degree in the United States. I, I went to uh, United States, uh, I think in the year, I can't remember, it was 1990 or 91. Um, well, since I was very young, uh, I have always been fascinated uh, with uh, space and uh, rockets and uh, astronauts and uh, all this uh, wonderful, the final frontier uh, sort of visions, right? So uh, when I had a chance, um, well, I thought I would like to uh, study uh, something related uh, uh, to that front. And uh, I, I'm from Sabah. And so I graduated uh, quite early from the, my high school because I skipped a few grades. So when I finished high school, I was uh, only uh, 15. At that time, uh, there was already tailors. Uh, unfortunately, I think the, to, be, to be frank, uh, the American degrees transfer program was not quite established yet in the early 1990s. So I, I did not go through the Taylor's program, but uh, in retrospect, and after learning of uh, the, you know, all the colorful uh, events uh, that, that are going on there, if I had another chance, I, I think I would have done the American degree transfer program uh, as well at uh, Taylor's. Um, I, uh, I applied to uh, the University of California. I, I chose the Davis uh, campus uh, for several reasons. Uh, number one, because uh, they, were, uh, uh, they were friends, I mean, uh, family friends uh, uh, with children who graduated from there. And then uh, my, my brother, my late brother uh, was then uh, uh, staying in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I, I thought I would choose uh, um, a university close by. And then, uh, uh, 
uh, UC Davis at that point, I think offered this uh, aeronautical engineering the program. So I applied and uh, I was uh, accepted. So I, I went uh, to California. I, I think uh, there are several uh, perhaps uh, themes uh, which sort of ran through my whole uh, study experience in the United States, uh, especially when it pertains to engineering. I think number one, uh, uh, before you undertake a, a course of study in engineering, you have to realize that it is a huge commitment. Huh? Engineering, it's a calling. It uh, requires a, a lot of uh, commitments and uh, sacrifice from, uh, from yourself because, uh, well, uh, in, in order to undertake uh, uh, a study in uh, engineering, you have to have very strong uh, fundamentals. Huh? You need to have very strong uh, math and science uh, backgrounds. And I think uh, from what I saw just now, uh, if you were to go through Taylor's, uh, you would be able to equip yourself with that kind of very strong uh, mathematics and uh, physics uh, backgrounds. Um, because it is very important uh, in, in, in Malaysia, the, we, we learned um, differentiation, integrations and uh, in, in, in high school. Huh? And, um, but um, in, in, I think if you undertake such uh, engineering programs, you'll perhaps uh, learn this uh, again uh, during the first and second years of your, of your, of your uh, studies. Uh, but it, it's good to, to, to refresh yourselves uh, and then you have to take, I think, courses in uh, linear algebra and, uh, of course, a lot of physics and uh, chemistry uh, courses. Um, I think uh, tailors will be able to equip you with uh, all of this. Then uh, during, and, and that would be, uh, I think, the first two years of your, of your uh, studies. And then uh, during the last two years of your engineering uh, studies leading to a, uh, to a degree, typically a Bachelor of Science degree in uh, one sector of engineering, then uh, you, would, you would, I think that uh, during the, either the second half of the, of, the, of your um, uh, second year or your, uh, in America, I think they call it sophomore uh, year and uh, uh, the third year, namely junior, you know, the junior year you would, take some uh, engineering fundamental uh, courses, such as uh, dynamics, such as uh, statics, uh, such as uh, fluid mechanics, such as uh, thermodynamics, uh, and various other engineering fundamental uh, courses, which would, uh, which would start to uh, equip you to uh, sort of, uh, uh, to, to branch out into your different specializations, uh, some of you would uh, later on go, uh, uh, for example, embark upon a course of study in uh, civil engineering. I think nowadays uh, civil engineering is typically linked with environmental engineering, at least in my alma mater in UC Davis, I think it was civil and environmental uh, engineering. And then uh, some of you would uh, take up the electrical engineering, electrical or electronics uh, engineering. And then you, you may go on to, uh, to, to do uh, all this uh, circuit design, chips design and, and so on. Uh, some of you may take uh, mechanical engineering. I double major in uh, aeronautical engineering and mechanical uh, engineering. Uh, some of you who are very interested in, uh, for example, uh, automobiles uh, su uh, such as car designs and so on. You may take the uh, mechanical engineering and if you are interested in designing airplanes and rockets, uh, then uh, you, would, you might take aeronautical or aerospace uh, uh, engineering. So the, you have a, a huge variety of, uh, of choices uh, as to which field of engineering you would like to embark uh, upon. There's also nowadays, I think materials material science and engineering. Huh? And, and uh, that is also a very wide field. You could be designing the, anything from the materials for making uh, elect, uh, electronic circuits 
to uh, composite materials for uh, making the aircrafts, uh, fuselage and wings and, and so on. So you, you, you're opening up yourself uh, to uh, a lot of uh, very exciting uh, new, field in the, uh, new fields. Uh, indeed, uh, sort of uh, the, 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 the foremost frontiers of, uh, shall we say, human uh, knowledge, right? You, but uh, that requires a lot of commitments uh, from 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 yourself. Uh, the, there will be long hours of uh, studies, and then, uh, as was mentioned just now, uh, there's a lot of teamwork uh, involved uh, as well. Engineering, uh, unfortunately, is not a solo uh, sort of uh, type of studies. Huh? It's not like. Uh, um, uh, some other courses of studies. It uh, very soon during your third year, namely your junior, as well as your fourth year, namely your senior year, you would find yourselves uh, being uh, assigned into different uh, groups uh, in your courses. And uh, well, uh, sometimes up to half of your grades for those uh, courses uh, uh, would be determined by your, your group work. Huh? And then typically it's your group work will be about 50%. And then all your individual uh, midterm and final exams will be about 50%. So you could not avoid uh, working with your uh, teammates, with your other uh, classmates. Huh? So the, it is not true that uh, people uh, try to um, stereotype the engineer saying, they, you know, they, they, they are nerds and so on. <laughs> uh, no, we are not antisocial. In fact, uh, as uh, the very at the very core of our studies, it requires uh, teamwork. No? I mean, up, as I said, sometimes up to half of your grades are determined by uh, teamwork. So it, it is also very important for you to have uh, to be punctual uh, in your in your various uh, no, number one courses, uh, attending classes. Number two, um, for example, in your lab, uh, in, in your laboratory uh, works. Uh, um, because, for example, the, in uh, aeronautical engineering, uh, we, 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 we had a wind tunnel in our campus uh, as part of our aeronautical uh, lab. But uh, everybody would like to uh, use that wind tunnel, right, in order to uh, experiment upon their uh, aircraft models and, and so on. But, uh, well, you, you are given slots, for example, uh, 10 to 11 o'clock in the morning is your slot. So if you are late, uh, then somebody else will take a uh, take away your, your slot because they, uh, they would like to experiment upon their uh, aircraft models as well. So the, it's very important to be punctual. It's, uh, it, it is also um, very important to have endurance. I still remember uh, having, uh, especially during my senior year and also during my uh, master's uh, uh, studies uh, when I need to uh, uh, when I need to do a lot of experiments, uh, I, I slept in, in, in the lab, uh, in both the computer lab as well as the aeronautical lab uh, for, for quite a number of, uh, of, of nights. Uh, um, of course, well, that was in the 1990s when all these occupational safety and health uh, regulations were not that strict uh, being enforced. Nowadays, I don't think they will allow you to sleep in the in the lab uh, anymore, but uh, uh, those were the days. Uh, we slept in a computer lab because, uh, you know, you, uh, yeah, by the way, you need to uh, learn some of these uh, computer languages. Uh, for engineers, typically it's uh, Fortran. Um, well, the, some of your, you have to work, the computing powers for all these uh, servers was, uh, was not as, as uh, powerful as now. So you need to wait for the result and, and, and so on, and, and then to, to tweak the result a little bit and uh, sort of reiterate your, your uh, computer simulations. And so, yeah, you, you essentially just spend a lot of time in the computer lab. And then, the, well, the, when you do experiments, uh, in my case, it was a uh, fluid mechanics, uh, uh, experiments, uh, well, you, you need to uh, adjust your, 
experiments and rush for the results and so on. So yeah, I, I spend a lot of uh, not sleepless, but actually sleeping nights uh, in, in, in the labs. I don't think you can do that anymore nowadays. So commitments, uh, punctuality, teamworks, uh, endurance, uh, uh, all these are very important uh, qualities for your engineering uh, studies. Um, another point is, of course, uh, you need to realize that uh, engineering is both uh, science and also the art. Um, it, it's, it's not quite pure science, but of course, uh, engineering at its core would, would, would have pure science at uh, its uh, uh, fundamentals but uh, it also requires a lot of, uh, of uh, human judgments. Uh, for example, in my field of study, uh, namely uh, aeronautical engineering, uh, to, design the, uh, to design wings, for example, uh, you, it, it, there, there, there are some rules about it, but very often it's also based on experiments, it's based on the experience, uh, based on well, a lot of exper experimentations. That's why the, the wind tunnel was very popular. You need to test out whether your, your model would, it would indeed be able to fly, number one, and number two would, uh, would indeed be able to stay uh, on its course uh, in, in flight uh, and, and, and so on. So the, it, it requires both uh, a very strong uh, fun, uh, fundamental in the, the basic sciences, but it also requires you to make the judgment uh, as you gain experience in a particular field of, uh, of, of uh, engineering uh, studies. So it's both an, a science and an art. Huh? You, you need, sometimes you need to have very elegant design. Sometimes your design may work, but it's not elegant. Huh? Um, and then uh, I think there, there's that point, oh yeah, versatility, I think, that was also mentioned uh, just now. Um, I, 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 I did a master's in the, essentially aeronautical engineering, the, um, but then I, I thought I would also like to do uh, something else. So I, uh, at the same time, I, I did an MBA and later on I did uh, a law degree and um, so you may not end up uh, uh, working as an engineer, but working as an engineer is a lot of fun, of course, because as I say, it's a frontier, it's a foremost frontier of human uh, knowledge, right? But if you like to do something else, uh, like, uh, like I, I, what I'm doing, the engineering also uh, equips you with, uh, with uh, very methodical thinking, for example. Um, nowadays, I do, as some of you would know, a lot of uh, political commentaries, right? So I'll be able to, uh, to hopefully break down sometimes uh, uh, rather complicated uh, political maneuvering into uh, digestible uh, beats so that uh, my audience will be able to appreciate what is going on in Malaysia's uh, nowadays very turbulent uh, politics. And, uh, and it also equipped me later on when I did my uh, law studies, uh, because uh, it, it uh, again, uh, that sort of very methodical way of, uh, of thinking to really uh, helped me a lot in both my legal studies, as well as nowadays as a political uh, commentator. I'm, I'm the uh, chairman of uh, uh, state uh, on the, aircraft maintenance uh, company. Uh, they, it, uh, it does um, uh, what, what we call a maintenance uh, repair and overhaul or MRO of uh, aircrafts. Uh, so um, it, I mean, all, even though I don't uh, involve myself in the day-to-day -day running of the company, but my own aeronautical uh, background really uh, helps uh, when it comes to uh, understanding the various intricacies of how uh, what we are doing would be able to translate into business plans and, and, and so on. So I, I, I think it's a very exciting uh, field of study, namely engineering. And, but again, as I said, it requires a lot of commitments. You open up uh, a lot of opportunities for you. 
And uh, I think with this uh, Taylor's uh, American Degrees Transfer Program, it really enables, I think, more and more Malaysians uh, to undertake uh, engineering. And uh, for example, uh, doing the last two years of your studies in the United States. So having the best of uh, hopefully both worlds. So I think I will end my presentation here. I'm happy to uh, answer questions later. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for your insight on the fields related to engineering, Dr. O. Oh. Yeah, actually the curriculum in the US University that you have described just now is really similar with our curriculum here in Taylor's ADP. We have marks for assignment, group work, midterm, and so on. Everything is counted for our GPA. Okay, so next, um, I would like to kindly introduce Dr. Christopher Potter, our second speaker for today, who will be providing us with the relevant information on the course of engineering and computer science. Before he, be before he begins, here is an introduction on Dr. Christopher. Dr. Christopher Potter is an associate professor in the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science at Drake University and the, director, and the director of Drake's Artificial Intelligence Program. Prior to joining Drake in 2016, he received his PhD in Mathematics and Philosophy from the University of Notre Dame in 2012. Dr. Chris was an NSF International Postdoctoral Fellow at University Paris 7 from 2012 to 2014 and a Postdoctoral Associate at the University of Florida from 2014 to 2016. His research interests lie in the theory of computation and algorithmic randomness. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Christopher to start his presentation today. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. I'm really happy to uh, be able to uh, share with you and talk uh, about uh, computer science. So let me get my screen loaded the right way here. Okay, so today I would like to tell you a little bit about why you might be interested in studying computer science. And then I will say a bit about the opportunity to study computer science at Drake University, which is something that I think we have some students through, uh, you know, we, we, we know there are Taylor students at, at Drake University and we, we see that um, students from Malaysia will, will come and, and work with us. And so we're very excited to continue the, the pipeline there. So before I start talking about um, the discipline of computer science. I'll say a bit about my my path to computer science. It was uh, I was happy to hear Dr. Sun was at uh, spent time in California. I grew up just south of San Francisco, so the first half of my life was in California. But really, my my studies, um, I guess, began in in um, uh, Gonzaga University, which is in the northwest of uh, in Washington State. I was an undergraduate there, and my focus was primarily in mathematics. And I studied some uh, philosophy, but my big interest was in logic. So I, I really was excited to learn about logic. And so when I went to Notre Dame, there was a graduate program that was a joint uh, mathematics and philosophy PhD program in what's called logic and the foundations of mathematics. So I, I spent a long time there, uh, essentially being trained simultaneously in two disciplines. Uh, one mathematics, so doing lots of coursework in mathematics, doing uh, preliminary ex exams and writing uh, half of my dissertation as mathematics, and then the other in philosophy, philosophy of computation, philosophy of mathematics. I didn't know that at the time, the area that I was working in, which is computability theory, this is a branch of mathematical logic. If I had done my PhD, say in Europe, I would have been uh, a computer scientist. So I didn't know how close to the boundary I was. And so my training, I consider myself uh, a computability theorist. And that's a study of something like the theoretical limitations of, of computation. So when I came to Drake University, the um, postdoctoral positions I had, one was a uh, computer science postdoc in France and a mathematics postdoc in Florida. I came to Drake to teach mathematics. And uh, at the time, I found many Drake students were doing mathematics and computer science in a way that I thought I need to learn more computer science to, to, to speak to them, to be able to understand where they're coming from and see how I can take the mathematical knowledge I have and help them better apply it. And because I had training really as a theoretical computer science, the transition was not as, as hard as it would, it would as hard as it would have been. 
Uh, several years ago, Drake began uh, a new artificial intelligence program, which required more than just computation, more than just mathematics, but it required philosophy. And so my philosophy training was very useful. The liberal arts, as uh, Dr. Wong had mentioned, this kind of versatility that you all have as faculty there, uh, we have here. And it was really great to, to be able to use my training and become the director of the, the program. So at the very end, I'll say just a little bit about our uh, interdisciplinary artificial intelligence program. And so when I became the director, I moved over and kind of an official transition to the computer science side of the Department of Math and Computer Science. And now I'm the chair on the computer science side. And I'm, I'm very uh, excited to um, talk to you about um, what, what it's like to, to study computer science, why it's so important. This is a very, very remarkable time that um, computers are uh, play such an imp important part of our lives and there is so much interest and demand for people with this skill set it is unlike anything i've ever seen our uh in terms of acad hi uh, higher ed the um the growth that we've seen in our own department with students choosing to study computer science uh is much more growth than i've seen anywhere ac across the university so um let me switch to my next slide and say just a little bit about why you might be interested in studying computer science. So, you know, I think many of you are familiar. I mean, you have probably uh, a, a smartphone and computers at home and at school. And so you have computers all over the place. But what is the science involved with computer science? And here we study, well, computation, of course, uh, but automation and even information. We ask questions, we answer questions like, how is information stored? How is information processed? Even more abstractly, what's the nature of computation? We have some people who do very theoretical work there, uh, but on a practical level, how can we express instructions necessary to perform a computation, right? So understanding programming languages like Dr. Sun had said before is really vital, right? Knowing how to build a, a, a complex program out of simple parts is a really uh, key skill. What techniques can be used to create new software or new hardware or interfaces between the two, um, implementing them in terms of robotics or computer vision or a range of different technologies. I was thinking about what would I say to pitch uh, why somebody might study computer science. And I found that the Association of Computing Machinery, which is the largest professional society for computer scientists had a very nice list. So I thought I would share the, uh, with you what that list is. And I think it's very convincing that um, you know computer science is such a such an important part of of our world today. So the first reason is that computer computing is part of everything that we do. There is no aspect of our lives that have not been changed in a very fundamental way by computers coming in and revolutionizing that area. I mean, we think now about cryptocurrency and how the nature of of currency is being changed, and we have to understand that. Uh, but but if you think back to how communication has changed, how social media has changed, how we relate to one another, how we receive news, how we navigate the world, think about how automated vehicles will become more uh, prevalent. All of these things are, are are so fundamental to changing how our you know our lives are lived, and so being uh, able to navigate that is really is really important. Second, expertise in computing allows you to solve complex challenging problems. Many problems require uh, handling, say, da data that is so complex and so large that no human could be able to read it or understand it or find a pattern by looking. There's not enough time in the world to do that. We even find problems in mathematics that can be only, uh, the only proofs we have for them are proofs that are given by a computer. No human can go through and read the entire proof line by line. So there are some really remarkable ways to make progress using com computational tools to solve those. So I think that's a really great thing to, to, to um, understand that computing allows you to solve more problems than any other time in history when we were just relying on our, our human power. I think of, of um, like a computer as, uh, a telescope we can understand the stars by looking up at the sky right but we need to enhance our vision and make our vision super powered so that we can see the far reaches of space well the same thing is with our minds we can solve small mathematical problems in our head or we can write on a piece of paper but we, we want a super brain we can use our machines to help augment our own intelligence and, and do really remarkable things 
I think that computing allows us to make a positive difference in the world. There are so many problems in the world that were we to solve them, that could help really make uh, uh, significant change. We have um, students at Drake that are working in a, a capstone course for a data analytics program using computational tools to solve problems for a nonprofit that builds homes for people that ha cannot afford them. So there are many ways to do service with these computational tools, lots of nonprofit work. But even if you think about problems in climate change, these require very complicated computational models. And so being able to solve some of the biggest problems that face us today, really computer science features fundamentally there. Uh, more practically, computing offers very many types of well-paid careers, and I'll say a bit more about that afterwards, but many of our students are interested in studying so that they're prepared to go out in the world and, and be, um, you know, find it e e easier to find a job and stay in that job and succeed. And then so that's something that I think is really a strong point as well. Computing jobs are here to stay. They are not going anywhere. This is not something that will become obsolete. They're, um, regardless of where you're located, the pandemic has shown us that we can work from all over the place. And you know, we have people here in Iowa that are working for self-driving cars in, in California, uh, self-driving car companies in California, working remotely, teams now able to collaborate in different ways. So that flexibility, these computing jobs, there's gonna be demand for them no, no matter where you are. Expertise in computing would help even if your primary career choice is not in computing. If you are working in an area that requires business consulting, knowing uh, computational, uh, how to handle computational tools only can enhance your ability as a consultant. Uh, in, in many, many different areas, I think that you know scientists use uh, computational modeling in so many different settings. And so it's a very versatile tool. Computing offers great opportunities for true creativity and innovation. Uh, uh, you can do, make a program do whatever you dream of. There's no limitation. I teach even low, low level classes where we give our, our students projects and ask them to do something original. And my mind is blown with how creative and uh, insightful they can be by putting something together that I thought I would have never thought of doing it that way. And so it's very exciting because we let our students kind of dream big and then see how high they will achieve. And, and so that's something that I think you can really, once you learn the basics, you know, you have to kind of get focused on the, on the fundamentals. But once you do that, there are really no limitations to how creative do you want to be? What do you want to try to build? What do you want to solve? Computing has space for both collaborative work and individual effort. So you can work in teams. Much of the software engineering these days, people are working in, in teams where you know, massive software uh, systems are being built in small pieces by individuals that are combining them and all of this coordination is necessary. Uh, but also individual work is an important part of it as well. So you can be a very social collaborator. You could have more of a lone kind of work. Uh, there's opportunities for both there. Uh, I think that more and more we're finding that computing is an essential part of uh, being well-rounded in academic preparation. Here in the United States, we are finding that high schools want to teach computing more, and this is a new opportunity. When I was in high school, there was no, very little computing that's going on, and now it's becoming almost part of the standards. And then lastly, like I related to an earlier point, future opportunities in computing are without boundaries. We have not figured out the limitations of what we can do. I mean, if you think about using uh, um, autonomous vehicle to navigate the surface of Mars, uh, who would have thought 20 years ago that that would be something that we would be able to do? And with the computational tools that we have, we continue to push the boundaries farther and farther. With respect to the employment side, I think that, you know, just practically speaking, the demand for computer scientists is higher than the supply of computer scientists to fill those roles. And here over the last decade, you see that the number of computer science students, I think, produced in the United States was much smaller than the number of jobs available. And so that means that employers have to compete for students. And that's a great position to be in. Uh, other, other fields, I mean, there are challenges with 
Uh, many people, I would say, you know, even um, when we hire in mathematics, we will receive hundreds of applications for people with mathematics degrees. When we hire in computer science, the pool is so much smaller because those people can go to industry, they can go into so many different areas. So the, the market for computer science positions is a really, really remarkable one. If you have that degree, you are in a very, very fortunate position. I feel very fortunate to be in a field that is growing so rapidly. 63% uh, of the science, technology, engineering, mathematics jobs in the US are in computer science. It's a huge percentage of them now. And so this is something that we see many of our students will uh, get uh, trained, they will do internships, and they will get employment here in uh, lots of different places in the US, uh, because they have that that really strong degree. If you look at IT jobs in general, you'll see that artificial intelligence, machine learning, these things have uh, extremely high demand. So within computer science, you can be a software engineer, or you could do a full stack development, or you could do a machine learning engineer. And these things, uh, the, the average salaries for these are extremely high, and these are um, very competitive uh, jobs in the sense that um, what do I mean? Uh, you can you can be uh, on the market and get people more interested in you because you have that skill set. I was curious about cybersecurity. I heard on the radio when I was driving yesterday that there are currently 400,000 openings in cybersecurity in the United States. And so I found data worldwide since the pandemic. There have been some changes globally. The number has gone down a little bit. In North America, it's fluctuated, so now 400,000. In Latin America, 700,000. Europe, 200,000. Asia, Pacific, uh, uh, you know, so Asia, a 1.4 million. This is a huge area of need. Cybersecurity is so fundamental. I mean, we see that this, the future of safety of nation states often requires uh, awareness of cybersecurity principles and being both uh, defensive and, and also proactive in being able to secure and keep, keep safe. Okay, so there's are really some things in general about computer science, but I want to say a little bit in the remaining time I have about uh, Drake University. So, oh, I guess I have a, one more of, you can see kind of nation by nation, uh, the different number of um, positions, uh, the gap. So this is now um, how many people there are to fill these positions, but then um, subtracted from the number of openings there are. So in the US, for instance, 300,000. Okay, so very remarkable. Let me show you another map because I wanna say something about Drake University. We are located in Des Moines, Iowa. So, you know, I, was grow I grew up here in the Bay Area in California, and this is where nearby where Dr. Um, Dr. Sun was. Uh, Des Moines is the capital of the state of Iowa. So here's, uh, this is Illinois. So Chicago is the closest big city but also Minneapolis is here, Kansas City is here, Nebraska is here. And this area is now being referred to as Silicon Prairie. We have Silicon Valley here. This is the highest tech, most important tech area in the world, but we're seeing tech growth here in the Midwest. A lot of companies are building data storage facilities because they can use wind power to cool the facilities when it's hot in those summers. And in the winters, it's already cold enough to keep those cool. So this is a really great place for a lot of massive data storage. Uh, here in Iowa, we have Facebook and Microsoft and Apple uh, building these massive facilities to store a lot of their data. So Drake University is nestled right in the heart of the center of the state. So the campus is a, uh, this kind of quaint uh, campus uh, of about 5,000 students between undergraduate and graduate programs. And for, to zoom out from, there's the university. Here is downtown Des Moines, which is a very cool, um, big kind of city feel, although it doesn't look like New York City or anything, but here even Principal Financial Group is the main skyscraper here. They will hire our students who do uh, actuarial science and data science or software engineering. And here off in the distance, this is a building with a golden dome. This is, this, this is the capital of Iowa State. So the, all the um, state legislature, uh, governor, everything is here. So Drake plays a very important role with its connection to the downtown area, which is a very um, strong financial sector, but also for the political part, uh, center of, of our state. Computer science at Drake is uh, a blend of, is a computer science, 
but we have a, a liberal arts focus for our university. So you understand the theory and practice of computing in the context of a liberal arts education. So instead, students obviously have to learn how to write computer programs, but they also learn, you know, programming language design, logic, data structures, operating systems, computer architecture, applications of computing. We have very cool ones, robotics, computer vision, human computer interaction, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Opportunities for majors arise uh, in software engineering in a wide, wide variety of industries and in graduate school. Our faculty has grown almost one new member per year over the last five years, and we have an eighth person that will be joining us. Uh, we just in the last year hired uh, Alamo Reza as a computer vision uh, expert. Rajan Koonsberry is a cybersecurity expert who was a working for uh, the largest school district in the state of Texas as the cybersecurity kind of head. Uh, we have a human computer interaction specialist, some people who study theory of computation, uh, machine learning, cloud computing. Our curriculum, so just to give you a flavor, a course for a, a degree uh, in our computer science program, these green courses, computer science one, computer science two, software engineering, algorithm analysis, these, these light ones uh, are required. And then the students can choose five other courses, say robotics, machine learning, uh, theory of computation, bioinformatics, computer graphics, programming languages, compilers, uh, network management, and so on. So many different opportunities. You can see that there are some things that you must do. And maybe with a transfer from a from say Taylor's program, you may have some of the early courses already fulfilled. And we work with transfer students to see that they are uh, have the right course material ready so that we can count their courses over here. And then maybe right away, you can move into upper level classes and start taking other courses that will help kind of fill out your, your degree. We also have a, a separate data analytics major that is, uh, I think Dr. Wong had mentioned this module in data science. And so we built an entire major, which has some computational courses, uh, a handful of statistics courses. And so this has really been a very popular major. Last year it was the largest major on our campus. And we just started, like I said, this artificial intelligence program, which draws on not just the computer science, but we have business and law component and even uh, arts, humanities, uh, social sciences. Students will study neuroscience and psychology because to write good algorithms in artificial intelligence, it's very helpful to understand how the brain works. Students will take courses in philosophy because very uh, challenging issues arising from artificial intelligence often have philosophical roots in them. And so we want our students to be extremely flexible and broad in their thinking so that they can handle problems, not just in a technical area, but in whole the whole impact of what AI will do to our society. So that's uh, a little bit about everything. You can learn more about our programs uh, with these websites, drake.edu slash CS would take you to our computer science page. Drake.edu slash analytics will tell you about our data analytics program. Drake.edu slash AI, artificial intelligence. And, and also our math program is drake.edu slash math for some of you who might be interested in mathematics. And if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer those. And you can email me here. My email address is christopher.porter at drake.edu. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for sharing your perspective on the numerous in-demand fields related to computer science. Wow, I might need request to change my major from business to computer science now. <laughs> okay, um, we will now be moving on to our Q&A session. If anyone has a question, kindly post them up in the chat box and the speakers will try their best to address them. Okay, so the first question is, um, what are the career prospects and applicability of a degree in mechatronics? Dr. Oh, would you like to take this? Well, the mechatronics uh, was an emerging field when I was uh, in California in the 1990s. It, it, it requires, uh, I think, a synthesis between mechanical engineering as well as uh, electronics uh, engineering. Uh, nowadays, you would have, uh, for example, a few such as uh, automations, such as uh, autonomous uh, car driving and, and, and so on. Uh, during my time, it was primarily about uh, using the computer control uh, machine uh, touring abilities. Uh, for, for, for example, 
you have a mechatronic uh, machines uh, be able to use computer to uh, sort of uh, uh, design together with well, at that time artificial intelligence was I think just uh, really uh, at its budding stage uh, to, to design a certain car model, for example. And I, I, I think uh, by now, a quarter of a century later, I'm sure this is a, a field which is very uh, mature and, uh, and, and it, it, it branched off, uh, I think, beyond just uh, uh, vehicle designs. I think nowadays you have drawn designs and so on, which requires uh, mechatronics, uh, capability at both its uh, design as well as manufacturing uh, stages here. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. O. Okay, the second question is, um, how available are scholarships for international transfer students? Dr. Chris, could I put this to you? This is a challenging question to me. I can say that the Drake University um, Office of Admissions is really active in recruiting and working with students. And we have people who work with international students. And so the resources there, they are the ones who can uh, equip students with scholarships. I know that there are a range of different scholarships associated with, um, well, there are some connected to our programs. And so I think that the best way to get uh, information, at least for Drake, would be to get in touch with the Office of uh, Admissions. I think that in general, I mean, I think that the um, one question I, I think about if you were to ask peers from Taylor's program who have gone on to other schools in the US and try to get their wisdom of how they were making that transition, I think that that's always a very reliable thing to do. Um, maybe I can share a bit of my experience. Uh, uh, I, I think a way to doing that uh, uh, is to, at least for me, we, when you are still in undergrad, uh, you would, number one, have to uh, get very good grades. And then uh, you would go on to become, for example, I, did, I think at that time it was co-reader for, for your professors. Uh, namely, you help them uh, grade uh, homeworks and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, exams and, and so on. And that would not only get you some pay, that would typically... Uh, Wave part of your school fees. Uh, I don't know about Drek, but that was my experience in uh, UC. When you become a graduate student uh, later on, then you typically will become teaching assistants or TAs or research assistants, uh, RAs. Uh, then again, you will get paid and um, a substantial amount. If I remember correctly, half of my school fees uh, were, were waived. I think that's, uh, but of course, the preconditions for all of this, because these are very competitive. Eh? A lot of people would like to be readers and TAs and RAs. You need to be getting really good grades. That's why I say you need a lot of commitments when you undertake a, a course of study in engineering. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Christopher and uh, Dr. Oh. Okay, I think um, this will be the last question. Um, what is the advantage of students pursuing a degree in the US as compared to those who graduate locally or from other countries? Dr. Chris, would you like to answer this? I think I'm, I would be interested to hear Dr. Wong's perspective on this as a, a spokesperson for the transfer program. I, the reason I would say that is because I think I only have a context here. And so I don't know where the comparison would be. I do, well, I guess I can say that be, knowing how many jobs are in high demand here, there is, there's always, there's so much more need than what we are able to produce. So as students come to the US, there's, potential to you know go back home or to stay and find I mean I think you know there's it, it depends on the life that one wants to lead right I think that having a computer science degree across a range of institutions internationally uh, in the US or uh, elsewhere is uh, a great benefit no matter what so um, I think that that's uh, discipline wise it's very good but I think that to be able to see some of the opportunities here to say, well, maybe I do want to visit, you know, see what life would like be like working for one of the big tech companies, then this is a place where one would want to pursue that. Maybe I can add on this also, like 
because ADP program is quite a unique program, especially where the student actually kind of find out what is their passions, what is their like, like what is the thing they want to do. Because uh, just bear in mind that the first and the second year is where the student take all general educations. So they can take chemistry, they can take English or even calculus modules. So where they go and find out their interests. Then later in the third and the fourth year, they will venture into their major. So these two years is where actually the student go and find out their passions. Okay. Well, I, oh, yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I can just add a bit. I, I think uh, be, being able to, uh, for example, uh, spend, uh, let's say, the last two years of the studies in the United States uh, would, of course, uh, in addition to learning all the technical knowledge, it's also an, uh, an experience to, uh, for example, I, I, I noticed uh, the faculty uh, as well as the uh, student body in uh, Drake University, it's very internationally diverse. You'll be able to uh, interact uh, with a lot of uh, some of the best and brightest from uh, around the world. Then perhaps uh, you would have, uh, if not find a job in the, in the U.S., you would perhaps have some internships in the, in the U.S. Uh, I, for, for me, for example, from U.S., I move on to Geneva, and then to Hong Kong, and then finally coming back to Malaysia and enrich my uh, perspective. Uh, you, you need to, I think at some point in your life, uh, make that uh, decision to get out of the country, to see the rest of the world, what they can uh, offer and what you can learn in order then to, to, to enrich your own uh, community and society. Yeah. Okay, thank you professors for your insights. That will be the end of the Q&A session for today. However, if you have any further queries that we weren't able to address today, please feel free to contact us. Do check out the Taylor's ADP Facebook and Instagram pages. On behalf of the organizers, we would like to thank our speakers for taking the time to be with us today. We would like to extend a big thank you to all of you joining us today. We hope you found this webinar informative and valuable for your future study in engineering and computer science. We hope that you will join and experience our learning journey at Taylor's ADP in the forthcoming months. To receive any further updates, be sure to follow our Taylor's ADP Facebook and Instagram pages. Hope to see you around soon and stay safe.